I did it. Good morning. It is Wednesday. And we're, I don't know, what is it, six, five days into the league. And it's time for the build update. Yay. I have been playing this Holy Agony build. Actually, I have been playing three Holy Agony builds. Two of them died, unfortunately, through various things. Uh, the first one was <laughs> my own fault. Uh, I put in a very dangerous map. I had some conditions where I probably shouldn't do this. This is a bad idea. If that happens, I should log out. The bad thing happened, betrayal spawned, and I didn't leave the map. And I died to betrayal. Oh, this is very bad. And I'm the dead. The victor. Oh... So we re-rolled, died again, do some bullsh**. Ha! Justice is served. And then re-rolled, and now we're here. I've been going pretty slow this league, trying to not put too much strain on my shoulders and all that, so we can have a long league, because there is a lot of builds to do, there's a lot of content to do here, but let's not talk about too much about that, but let's just focus on this character. Now, what is this character? This character is, as I said at the league start, it's a holy, ag a holy relic plus agony build. Holy agony is actually quite a good skill gem. It does good damage, you can scale it high, but it runs into reservation problems. So, when I saw the Holy Relic of Conviction, and the fact that they both scale of Fizz, and then we noticed that the new node here, or it's the same node, but on Holy Might has changed to Convert, and then we can really lean into this Chaos, sets us up for some really good synergy, where the hit post ba uh, portion becomes really strong, because all the Wither and Despair that you would normally use in a Poison build also applies to all your hits, because so all the physical damage is converted. So that's really nice. And then you use the Holy Conviction as a substitute for a support gem, uh, essentially to not having to deal with reservation as much, to increase our AoE. These function way better than your regular uh, support gem as they just they, they, they provide an AoE on the enemy. And then we make it poison and all this. I'm using Phantasm right now. Uh, mainly because of this thing and the fact that once you, when you don't have a high gem levels yet the phantasm provides a good damage buff it's equivalent to minion damage i think and it kind of layers some extra minions out there to tank for you and it fixes up your bone barrier now in an end game setup i would probably give up phantasm as we when we start getting more gem levels uh it wouldn't apply to the support gem and this would fall out of favor or some other gem so that's like the baseline we're playing a necromancer we have the block uh, i can show you here currently i am at 77 spell block 58 block uh, this could actually go up to pretty much cap on block chance as well if you get a block shield if that's something you want uh, i do have a decent shield for that but it i can't fix my resist just yet so you could actually max block on both on a build like this, it requires that you stack a lot of um, offering effect. What you could do here is you could add enhance here for offering effect. And probably temp chain. No. It may be for offering effect. And then you would need temp chains on hit somewhere. Uh, that could be a, a setup. Uh, you can get more offering effect on chest. You can get more offering effect on the boots. So you have the opportunity to max block. Then you just stack a lot of life, you use EB so you can reserve all your mana. And then the way we play this build is that we use this skill, the Lantern Stealer Spraying, to maintain Herald stacks, which is why we need to have a Poison Chance on our weapon and Poison Chance on the setup here. And then the Herald provides you with the last bit. It gives you like 90, which is fine. You don't need the 5% here. I think 90 should do you all right, but getting to 100 is not bad if you're struggling with virulent stacks. Now you can also, I should quality this for more projectiles. And now the good thing about Lancing of Spring is that it shoots in a sequence. The sequence means that it procs Holy Relic at a very good rate. So you are close to uh, hitting the proc rate cap on Holy Relic 
as you're firing because they shoot in a sequence that lines up really well uh, but you definitely will need to get the 14 quality on the holy relic as a baseline as that is where the first breakpoint is should also quality up my hell of agony there's some quality stuff i should be doing i haven't done it's fine uh the rest of the stuff will just be your generic rares with suppression fist damage has ellie fist damage has ellie suppression you want suppression on everything it's a pretty difficult build to gear actually more difficult than i thought it would be uh, and let me talk about that. Let's go over here. Now, this is my current damage. So my EHP is fine. I could get more. As you can see, I don't have perfect fist mitigation yet. I could get um, fist mid on the helmet. I could get the physical damage taken as um, on the on the on the implicit. I could get fist damage taken as an element or chaos. And we could get this note here. When we cap out our chaos res um and i could get physical oh i actually do have endurance charges i could get a uh, physical damage uh, reduction on the chest as well i could get a endurance challenge on the boots per uh is a is a possibility uh so our fist mid can go to like can go fairly high i would say uh it's not too bad so defensively, we're doing good. The block is nice. Um, just itemizing for more physical layers. For defense, just to wrap that up, uh, what you would do eventually is you would swap this one as well for a Glorious Vanity with Sabakwa. And you would scale more Chaos Res as well in that case. But mainly it's also just so that Pen doesn't affect you as much. Uh, and then what you can do as well in this case is you could do something like a doppelganger. You could use that. You could corrupt that with something if you're lucky. We could also use uh, some other chests uh, defensively. So those are like your options. Um, defensively, this build is very strong. It's especially strong against multi-hits. Um, one more option I just want to note here on defense is a potential Aegis setup. Um, which would render you fair, pretty much immortal to any smaller hits. You would you would have infinite HP against a certain range of hits, them being small enough. And then you just want to have your max hit go as high as possible, so you increase where that lies. Okay, so defense is very good. Now offensively, as you can see, our damage, we're on a 5 link, and this is our damage right now. It's very consistent damage. Because we're so tanky, we can just kind of tank and spank a lot. Um, uptime is good. So like for a build that needs to be constantly attacking, though our layers of defense are good for it. Now the DPS is not that high. A five link would, a six link would definitely help. However, the thing that really makes this build pop is some cluster jewels and gem levels. And these have proven a bit difficult for me to get. Now, I want to show you what we could be getting and where this build can go without giving up any of our really nice defenses, pretty much. Now, right now, as you can see, we have like curse nodes. We have like something, nothing here. We have like these small things. So let's say that we took away all of this now we could eventually also get rid of this hits can't be evaded for another three points uh but for now i don't have hits can't be evaded on the weapon but we would get that in game but i'm just gonna leave that here so ignore these three points we're gonna spec out of this and then let's assume we got two cluster jewels now for cluster jewels since you're using a herald this cult leader is really good 35 minion damage while you're affected by herald great so just with this we're already looking a lot better. Remember, you could give up these three. So a same amount of skill points here. Before, what you would want to do now is you would also want to cap your poison. You can cap your poison straight through gems. Right. So what you want, which I haven't gotten either, and I've been farming abyss, darkness enthroned, right? You would want the darkness enthroned with two jewels with life and poison. That would give you a six and po 60 poison chance, just like that. Uh, would be great. And then you can use the Amahu's Gaze or whatever, the um, unique jewel as well with Dot Multi for minions. So there is like so much upward scaling here. But let's just, let's just, let me just show you the, the harder part to get. Like those things would be okay to get. 
I mean, essentially, this one here, you would still, like, on a 5-link right now, you would actually still have this, but you would also have the, like, you would, essentially, by getting the poison chance on the gear, you would grant yourself the ability to click another minion gem which is already like we're close to double damage already at about the same amount of skill points just through some gearing now let's then move that even further let's say you got on so what we can get here is we could get a helmet with plus two and without being the super tank setup you can get a shield with plus one what would that give us well that would give us the equivalent of the don't don't ignore the stats on these items it would already put us at the Again, 60% more damage just from three gem levels, right? That would be the plus one on the helmet, or plus two on the helmet, and plus one on the shield, which is very easy to get. I mean, the helmet is more of a tricky one. It could be plus one, but you could also get an amulet with either plus one fizz, would be, which would be fine, or plus one to all, uh, which would be even better. But let's just, let's just look at this right now. Just a plus three. Then, now, here's another thing you can do. Like we're keep keeping the poison in. Now, let's say that you got your Awakened Gems, which this build scales incredibly with. You get the Awakened Void Manip, and you get the Awakened Minion Damage, and now you also let go of the fan. So the Phantasm gives you like 25-30% more damage currently. So our, our damage is actually around a million baseline. But now this wouldn't be worth it anymore, and you would have your Empower in here. And I mean... Boom, and then you hit the plus one on the Herald. And then you go for the 20 quality. And this could go to 55. And now we're at 6 million. And we have, like, we would still have an equivalent amount. Like, the defense would still be, be able to hold, and we would still be able to, like, get that to, like, I think you can get to, like, 20, 25k. You can get the elemental max hit to, like, 50, 50k. And then... You have max block and you'll have max suppression. And you're against the right content, especially soft core. The effective health pool is worth a lot because the block actually is. It's very consistent uh, until it isn't. But it, that's fine on soft core because you can take on some really difficult content and you will rarely die. It's like every now and then it'll there'll be a fluke and it'll go through. But for the most part, like... This, and this is not even like, we're not even min-maxing here, right? We can have some two sick jewels here. This is just assuming you cap. This right here is assuming you get your awakened gems. Obviously, the empower is the tough one to get here, obviously. But the empower is kind of huge. Oh, I actually have another gem available. Because this is still with poison. Holy sh**. Okay, you can get unbound ailments on there as well. Poison, we would still be able to buy. <laughs> uh, oh my... Yeah, 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 I mean, there's a lot of upward scaling here. I think you can probably, like, with the right min-max, can we reach dot cap? Yeah, I think so. But it will require, like, gem level scaling and all this. I mean, you can definitely break, easily, easily break 10 million. Even on hardcore, like, with the same amount of defense. But it kind of, like, the gearing in terms of getting the helmets and chest and the gem levels and the plus one here and the plus one there it's difficult let's just put it that way it is not that easy gearing wise on solo self-found on trade gearing is easy in comparison the awakened gems which are huge multipliers for you are easy to obtain Fairly easy to obtain, I would say. These are not things that are going to hold you back. A plus one, potentially plus two, and a plus one shield are fairly easy to get. And so you're easily looking at like 5 million plus with an incredibly tanky build. Uh, with a build that plays quite well. It's not the fastest clear. It's not slow either. Um, once you get to this level of damage, it's actually going to be really fast. Because your holy relic is going to start really pumping. Now, at this gem level, your Holy Relic is starting to fall off a bit. But I would say it's still worth it for the overall for the overall fact that it gives you instant damage off screen. Now, maybe Phantom... No, but you still kind of want a secondary gem here that scales with Fizz because otherwise the reservation becomes tricky. 
Now you could eventually turn this to a full Hurl of Agony, but I think early on, especially before gem levels, this is really good. So that kind of rounds out the build and kind of the potential. Uh, I was trying, I just wanted to give you guys, because I'm going to bank, uh, uh, bank this for now uh, and start collecting gear. I'm going to most likely level up an MOM character now and then start gearing this up on the side. And I'm really, I'm really looking into maybe making it into an Aegis character. Um, so it can just essentially um, trivialize content where block is king. Uh, is what I'm thinking. And so yeah, that's that's this character right here. It's pretty cool. Uh, a couple notes here. Uh, you take reduced damage from crit. Reduced damage from crit are really strong. Especially this league when there's like random crit everywhere. Oh, one one other thing. It's a bit, bit of a busy build. Because you have to keep attacking all the time. It's not your normal just run around and the minions attack and kill everything. It is you making your minions attack. So you constantly have to be attacking and main, making sure that your minions are alive. Because minions do die every now and then. In terms of getting the armor, by the way, uh, energized, the energized uh, gem here, the unique gem, taking these two and then going for Fist Chaos and 10% of armor applies to it. And then stacking better armor gear here. You can get to like 30, 40,000 armor. And you're starting to look really good in that respect. But yeah, it's a bit of a busy build. A little bit more than I thought it would be. But it's okay. Uh, variations would be anything for the Holy Relic specifically for those wondering. It's a phys physical spell. Uh, you could do like a Phantasm, Holy Relic, Guardian is what I thought maybe. And then you do like Hatred Scaling and you convert them like all the damage to Cold. And you can do like Hatred plus... What's that aura called? I forget. It's the one with the spell damage and the crit chance. Uh, that's an option. You can do double aura scaling on a setup like that. That could be pretty cool. I don't like play it as an aura mancer. But yeah, that's the build. Next up would be a new build for me. If you're interested in my thoughts and ideas on this build and how it's going to progress, you can always come around and check out the stream. I'm always there to answer questions. But I was, I'm pretty happy with this as a starter. It would have been very good on trade. A bit tough on SSF until you acquire the gear. It's not impossible gear to acquire by any means. But when you're kind of restricted by the gear in terms of farming faster. And you want to farm that gear to farm faster. It's kind of like a little annoying. So we're going to re-roll. Re have another one. Gear this up on the side. And maybe come back to it. Yep. That's the video. Hope you enjoyed it. And remember guys, if I can do it, you can too.